CC Network, don't take no for an answer. No was the answer to the question of, will Arizona avoid back-to-back -back season opening losses? 45-38, the final. Khalil Tate passed for 300, rushed for 100, and came up just one yard shy of tying the game on a mad scramble late. It was a big win for head coach Nick Rolovich and, Rolovich and his club at Hawaii, who tweeted after the game, Mahalo, which I believe translates to... How dare you pick us? That wasn't very smart of you. The game day guy's uh, picking Arizona Lee course, so you can see hanging his head in shame <laughs> there as well. Uh, Dusty, what do, you, what do you take away here from this uh, Arizona loss to Hawaii? Not just a big day for Hawaii, but a big day for fat guys everywhere. Us defense alignment. <laughs> Manly Williams made us proud. You know what I mean? In the summertime, what do you do? You hold up four fingers and you say what? You say finish. Finish the play. Watch my big guy from the stack all the way down the field. Never gives up on the play. The effort is outstanding. And it's all about finishing the football game. He makes the hit at the one-yard line. If it weren't for the big man giving max effort, a little tape may have scored, and who knows what happened. So, huge day for defense alignment everywhere. Thank you, Manly Williams. I understand we're usually on opposite sides of the fence, but we can all come together for big people doing great things in the name of football. And this is a moment to celebrate for everyone here. I am just so proud of this large man for balling out and stopping. Listen, Khalil Tate's going to be one of the most exciting players in college football all season. Arizona is going to be the ultimate trap game for a lot of these teams in the Pac-12 that are contenders, especially come October and November. But, man, that was fun to watch. It was crazy. I remember sitting there, and it's about 1 in the morning, so I'm, like, exhausted. I'm like, i got to watch the rest of it. i got to watch the rest of it. Next thing you know, Khalil Tate gets out. Oh, there he goes. There he, I'm standing on the couch. And next thing you know, he's tackled. like, oh, my goodness. It was like the Tennessee Titans in the Super Bowl against the Rams stopped on the one-yard line. Who got him? What number? Wait, what number was that? Is that a D lineman? Did you guys see that correctly? He just chased down Khalil Tate. Hey, great effort, great hustle, and good job, Dusty, by saluting the big man in the trenches. <laughs> well, it's, uh, and that's the least shocking news of the day is Dusty uh, doing that one there. But it is year two <laughs> under Kevin Sumblin, and they open up with a loss. Uh, Mike, what, what, is, what does this loss mean for Sumlin and, and Zona? It means that going on the road to Hawaii in week zero is a really hard thing to do with all the travel considerations in that. It means that this is a really talented and exciting team yet again, and Khalil Tate's going to be a guy that we all love watching. But ultimately, they're a trap game and not a contender when it comes to the Pac-12. This is a three-team race for this conference's viability in the college football playoff. But Arizona is going to be that team that if you're not ready and if you're looking ahead to the next game, can absolutely have the talent and ability to snake bite you. What I'm having a hard time figuring out is why Khalil Tate still in 2019 looks uncomfortable. Look, I understand last year he wasn't 100%, and he's never going to be a real accurate thrower. It's just not who he is. Yeah, and you look at the numbers, and you get enamored with the box score, 360, 100-plus rushing, all that stuff's great. But he missed some gimmies. I mean, there's some wide-open guys out in the left flat that he passed on. There were a couple decisions when he should have run, he decided to throw it and was inaccurate with the football. Threw a couple picks. It, just for whatever reason, he still doesn't look comfortable in Noel Mazzoni's offense and Kevin Sumlin as his head coach. They just haven't quite figured out the best way to use him. Yeah, he got some points. Yeah, he scored a bunch as well. And the defense still has their problems. But I just want to see Khalil Tate just one more time, or at least for an extended part of the season, I want to look and resemble the Khalil Tate from 2017 when he was probably the most electrifying, play, electrifying player in college football down the stretch. Yeah, it was like he was a video game type player. But listen, this is problematic yeah. for me, fellas, because they had six turnovers they created. Tell me the last time a team created six takeaways and lost a football game. I know they had to go far away, and it's not easy to play Hawaii, and that's a pretty good Hawaii team. They benched their quarterback in this game. The backup came in and got it done. So I don't look at this game so much as a, you know, on Khalil Tater, the offense. That defense had some real problems giving up big plays. But then also with that, when you get six takeaways and you can't come out with a victory, that's a problem uh, overall. And for me, that's on the head coach. Turnover margin, the number one stat in football. You get six takeaways and you lose to a team that you need to beat. That's a yeah. bad loss for Kevin Sumlin and this Wildcat team. Well, it's the fourth time in six road games under Kevin Sumlin that the Wildcats entered the second quarter with a double-digit
deficit. So th these things need to get fixed. By the way, Cedric Bird, the second for Hawaii, was outstanding. Got to give him some love. 14 grabs, yeah. 224 yards, four touchdowns for yep. Hawaii. So.